Hi everybody, it's great to be back for our 25th lesson on the laws of Shabbat. We're going to continue with traveling. We spoke about, um, in our last two lessons, about sailing, going on a boat before Shabbat for the purposes of um, doing a mitzvah, or for private purposes, what are the differences in both situations. We discussed putting oneself into, um, purposely putting oneself in a situation where he's going to be forced to violate the Shabbat to save his life. When, when is that permitted? When is that not permitted? The difference of opinions that were mentioned, that was a long discussion. And now we're up to um, adding a little bit about what would be traveling, you know, would one be allowed to travel on a plane, for example? Let's say you get in a plane on a Friday, you're traveling to Europe from Israel, a couple of hours away, and the time you arrive in Europe or enter your, um, you know, continue flying over Europe airspace already, it's going to get dark, it's going to already, Shabbat's going to enter. And then you ended up traveling on Shabbat on a plane. Now, you're not the pilot, you're not flying the plane, but you're sitting on a plane. Someone is flying it for you and for other passengers as well. But the question is, if that is the, it goes and enters the same realm or the same area that we discussed, going on a boat before Shabbat, which was, we said in, in certain circumstances, is, is 100% allowed, although a person is going to end up um, um, sailing on Shabbat itself. So would that be... Um, different than going on a plane or going on a train, for example, from one country to the next, or one area in Europe to the next, which I'm talking about large train rides. Here in Israel, we don't have a train ride for sure. That first of all, the, all the, most of the conductors are Jewish and um, whatever, so you wouldn't really have a situation we can compare it. But only in Europe or places in the United States or long train rides that you can end up leaving on Friday and end up driving on a plane on Shabbat or a long bus ride in, in large countries. So that's the question, would that be um, similar to the situation of sailing on a boat? And the answer is, here we have to take into a few different factors why uh, for one doing this for personal reasons, for sure it would be prohibited. The reason is why. There's an important concept we spoke about in the past regarding Shabbat, it's called Tchum Shabbat. Tchum literally means the boundaries of Shabbat. In other words, when a person, you know, you're living here, let's take an example, I live on a community called Itamar in the mountains of Samaria in Shomron. And if I, you know, our community is surrounded by a fence, part of the community at least is. And if we, for example, leave our boundaries and we go outside the fence area, how much are we allowed to walk, you know, on Shabbat? Walking on Shabbat is not at all a prohibition. But the question is, how much could we um, walk outside our city boundaries and, or it's, Unless it's unlimited. Is there a limitation according to Torah of how much we're allowed to walk outside our boundaries on Shabbat? And the answer is, according to the rabbinical law, our rabbis um, made an enactment that we are not to leave more than a kilometer. In other words, more than we, something we say is al paim amma, a meal, al paim amma, 2,000 cubits, which is around 912, or 900, different opinions how much that is, about 912 figure a meters. That would sort of be our limitation. We would allow to do this in a, the radius of, of 915 meters in all directions, walk that distance on Shabbat, but we couldn't go beyond that unless we made a special eruv, which would allow us to go another additional 900 and whatever meters. So that's something we call isol tchumim, you know, the prohibition of going outside the tchum on Shabbat. So the question is, what happens if we get inside um, we get in the boat, we spoke about this in the last lessons, and we're on a boat, we're definitely going more than a kilometer. So, for surely we're leaving the tomb, and the answer is, in a boat is different. Because when a boat, you're on the water, and the water is like, an, it's a no man's land, it's another dimension. And therefore, as long as you're not going within 10 tfachim, which is about 80 centimeters, about a meter, as long as the water is deeper than, you know, a meter deep, so you're not going to run into a problem of the tchum, of leaving a boundary, because it's like you're always in another status. You're not, not considered leaving the boundaries on a boat. It's, since, the, since the whole concept of boundaries and water is, is rabbinical, and this is rabbinical, it's, there's nothing to worry about. That really is not a big major issue over there. But the difference would be on traveling on land or over land in a plane, that would be a problem, because that's already we're getting to a safek. A safek from the Torah. Now, why from the Torah? If I said the whole concept of, of going outside the boundaries is rabbinical, it's not all rabbinical. Because there are opinions that if we leave not, you know, um, 2,000 amot, which is a meal, which is around 912 meters, but if we would go about 
12, you know, Shtemis Lemiel, which is 12 kilometers, more than that distance, then there are opinions that hold that that was, a, that's already a, um, a Torah prohibition, because that's really the size of the encampment in the desert. Um, so if we were going to Shtemis Lemiel, 12 cubits, 12 kilometers, then we would be um, getting into an issue, a possible Torah prohibition. Therefore, when traveling on the water, we never get to that issue, as I mentioned before, but on land travel, on a train or in a car, we can get to that, for sure we have that issue. And therefore, the question is, if we allow to go on a plane on, you know, on Friday, then we end up, we're actually going outside the tomb, we're, we're, we are we are in a safek, in a doubt whether if we're transgressing a Torah ordinance. That's one reason why traveling for our own personal services, for personal reasons, on a plane, and would it go, lead into the Shabbat would be not allowed. That's one of the reasons behind it. Another reason we have to discuss would be, um, the, we spoke about being on a boat, getting sick, seasickness. The same thing happens on a plane. If anyone travels on a plane, or on a train, you know very well, your crowded conditions and the dryness. It's not so comfortable. No one, no one likes traveling on a plane or a train unless you're in first class, <laughs> you know, which I never experienced what that means. But anyway, I'm sure you know, most people suffer very much like I do on, pla on, train, on plane travel, and I'm sure trains are, are similar, and no one likes it. I mean, trains are a little better than planes for sure, but as long as you're being run around and pushed around, it takes away from the beautiful enjoyment of Shabbat. So that's really reason number two, why would we, we shouldn't do such a thing for our personal reasons, traveling on a plane or a train on Shabbat. Although we're not driving, it's a non-Jewish driver, you know, this should, it's, it's seemingly another reason besides the problem of leaving the boundaries as we spoke about before. So that's no, reason number two. Reason number three, and this is also brought down in that in our law, that if someone, let's say, let's say you're, you have a, a wagon driver, horse and buggy, the old times when they were driving horse and buggies. And if a person, a Jew, wanted to be driven on Shabbat, and a horse and buggy, let's say, within the boundaries that you're allowed to drive. You know, not, I'm not talking about the tchum now, we spoke about that already, leaving the boundaries. But let's say you were driving within your city boundaries on a horse and buggy, you want to drive from point A to point B, and it's less than, you know, it's within the, the range you're allowed to go. That would nevertheless become problematic because our rabbis say there's another, they enacted another um, gzera, another decree, that if you're allowed to do that, it can end up a person could pull off a branch and try to help the wagon go a little faster by giving a couple of taps to the horses, and you'd end up cutting a branch on Shabbat, and you're not going to cut a branch. So sometimes you don't think, you're driving, you're doing something, and you put yourself in a way that you can accidentally do something, you can accidentally commit, um, commit a Shabbos offense, you know, a Shabbat prohibition, and therefore that's another reason mentioned. Now this reason wouldn't <clears throat> make sense on a on a train or on a <coughs> on a plane since you have no control over the uh, driving itself. But we see that there was a custom already, you know, by not to travel, you know, on on Shabbat, you know, leaving on Shabbat in that situation, and therefore we can actually maybe perhaps use that as another reason why it would be problematic. Another reason brought down is something called uvdin dechol. What is uvdin dechol? It means literally a weekday action. In other words, any kind of action that although it's not a Torah offense and not a rabbinical offense, but if it looks weekday-ish, if it looks like a weekday thing, it takes away from the spirit of Shabbat. The atmosphere of Shabbat is destroyed. And we all know that traveling, of course, would, would do such a thing. That takes away from the Shabbat rest, your home, your... And the, the Chatam Sofer, one of the great poskim, one of the great rabbis, um, actually brings down the Nachmanides, the Ramban, that, you know, uvdin the a weekday action on the Sabbath, on Shabbat, is likened, it, it's breaking a Torah prohibition of lishbot, to rest, because you're actually taking away your rest on that day. So these reasons, you know, would be problematic for traveling on a plane or on a train, since it's definitely a weekday action. We could also add to that, what would happen if you'd actually reach, when you do reach your destination, you're also in a big predicament because you can't carry on Shabbat, obviously off the train, because if you get off the train, you're, you know, if you're carrying um, outside the boundaries from a personal domain, a private domain to a public domain, you're already doing another offense. So you're sort of stuck on the train, 
And it's also an issue of, of if you, Shabbat came in when you were on the train already, then you're sort of in a, in a predicament that you're not allowed to leave, according to the, you leave the boundaries we spoke about, you're sort of stuck within those boundaries. You can't leave more than four cubits of, of space. So that's another problem. And, and again, carrying all these items that you have with you, what are you going to do with all your, your mux items? You can't touch money on Shabbat. So you have, let's say, on a plane, your plane lands. Okay, plane, you go right into the terminal, so you're not worrying about taking outside from the plane to an outside area, but you're, you can't walk into the terminal because, number one, you're stuck in the space I mentioned. Number two is another issue. What are you going to do with your, your bags, your baggage? You can't take it off. So these issues come up for that reason. It would seem pretty problematic to travel um, leaving on Friday and traveling, you know, going into Shabbat. Theoretically, it's a problematic thing as we see. Number two, so the question comes to be, here we spoke about traveling for the purposes of enjoyment, going on a pleasure trip. What would the case be if someone was traveling for a mitzvah? He had to go, you know, and do something important, which, which you know, enters the category of doing a mitzvah. In that situation, one would probably say, you know, it falls in the same category as what we learned about, you know, in our previous lessons, the argument over the different rabbis, those who say that if you are, you know, if you leave even before Shabbat, although you know you're going to en end up having to um, um, go over some kind of transgression, but if you're doing it for the sake of mitzvah, as long as you left before Shabbat began, you'd be allowed to, um, you'd be allowed to do that. So here they'd be going over the only... Um, Torah prohibition we saw here in the case of flying would be just leaving the, the range that you were allowed to go. So they would just basically be going over that prohibition, but they left before Shabbat. It is not in their power now, and they're sort of forced into it. So being forced into that prohibition, that we can say would be dependent upon the, 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 the disagreement we spoke about in the previous lessons. But in reality, if you remember, we also spoke about in the situation of the boat, that one would have to tell the crew of the boat to rest on Shabbat, you know, not to travel, to dock the boat, to throw the anchor. And here, you can't throw an anchor when you're up in the plane, no one's going to listen to you for sure, and you know that for sure. So that would be a difference, that those issues, according to at least the opinions of, we spoke about Rabbi Huda Nasi, who demands, Judah the Rabbi Huda the prince, who demands that you make that condition with the conductor and the, the, the captain of the boat in advance, that he rests you know, that would be problematic. But we also spoke about his father doesn't require such a condition being made, and therefore, again, perhaps there would be some kind of window up opening here to allow such a thing in a case of mitzvah. But in reality, Ramal Ahmed, in his Pinine al as we are learning now, he rules that today for sure there's no opening for such a, uh, uh, you know, a heter, as we say, to, to allow someone, even for the case of mitzvah, to fly in a plane or, or or to go on a train before Shabbat, going into Shabbat. Why? Because today, you know, we know that we're very, very, we can plan all our trips. We don't have to plan to leave on Friday. We can, there are options of reaching our destinations during the week, way in advance. We all can leave in the beginning part of the week and always reach our destination on any plane ride from anywhere in the world. You can get there by leaving on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. You'll definitely reach your destination before Shabbat comes in. There's no reason why you can't plan it that way. In the same way, regarding train travel, you, know, you can leave early enough in advance that your train's going to arrive during the week and not in, in going into Shabbat. And he brings down the Shibole Haleket, one of the rabbis um, of the Rishonim, who writes that the whole, this whole law of allowing one to um, you know, go sail on a boat on Shabbat was only in, in, in rare instances, in cases where there was a necessity, a great necessity. But today we don't have such necessity anymore, so it doesn't really apply, and that would really, literally take away all these options and, and to try to travel, um, you, know, of, 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 you know, of thinking about traveling before Shabbat, and it would go into Shabbat. So in reality, if we summarize, no, it is, it is prohibited. <clears throat> One should not be in a, such a situation of traveling you know, on Shabbat um, for doing the sake of a mitzvah. But of course, I'll just mention this, you know, on the side, not connected to what we're discussing. If, God forbid, there is an emergency situation where it's life-threatening, like a soldier in battle, and, you know, you're allowed to do anything to save a life, and, of course, someone who's, you know, doing something that's considered pikuach nefesh, life-threatening to save a life, of course, you're allowed to leave even on Shabbat. Shabbat doesn't apply, and that's obvious, but I'll just mention it because it should be mentioned. 
And we could also mention another issue. You know, let's say you're, you're somewhere in, on Shabbat, and you want a non-Jewish driver, taxi driver, to drive you somewhere. Let's say you want to go, you're in a city, and you just want a non-Jewish driver to drive you to another part of the city. There wouldn't be a problem of range because you're within the city boundaries, as I mentioned, but still you're not allowed to do so. For the other reasons we mentioned, traveling it takes away from the beautiful atmosphere of Shabbat, and, and having someone drive for you also. A non-Jew is not allowed to do something specifically for you. That's another problem. When someone is doing something specifically for you on Shabbat, you can't do it. But on a plane, and I know the other instance, that doesn't apply because he's not doing it specifically for you as long as the majority of the passengers are non-Jewish on the plane or um, right in that situation. He's really doing it for himself. He's doing it for the, for the other the non-Jews, but not specifically for you. But if, some, if you were to tell some non-Jew to drive a car for you, so you're literally telling him to do something for you on Shabbat, and that's definitely not allowed in, in all circumstances. And um, you know, even for the sake of doing a mitzvah, of course, you can't do such a thing in that situation. As we um, learned before, there, there are, the necessity is no longer as it was, um, you know, and the whole law we spoke about allowing one to, to travel was always before Shabbat. On Shabbat itself, for surely, you can't do such a thing like that. No questions asked on Shabbat itself. The only thing was if you would leave before Shabbat and end up leading into the Shabbat in that situation. But anyway, that's basically a summary of this um, topic. Our next topic is going to be about times on Shabbat, understanding zmanim, zmanei Shabbat, understanding times. And we will get to that in our next lesson, God willing. So this has been Lesson 25. Looking forward for our 26th lesson on the laws of Shabbat. Bye-bye for now.